Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the cabin. We certainly hope that everybody had a fantastic Christmas and had a good time with family and friends, and that if they're staying over for New Year's, we hope that everybody uh, has traveling mercies to get back home. Anyway, how many of you all end up with lots of stuff like this left over from the holidays, right? And a lot of that is just throwaway. But when you get something like this, now my sister gave me my Christmas and this one right here, this is a really nice burlap sack and it's woven really nicely. So we're going to save this. We'll get rid of all these boxes and papers, but we're going to save this to put other items in. So that's like actually getting two or however many gifts it was that she gave me plus an extra gift right there. So thank you for that. All right, friends. So this is what I have been waiting on primarily to start the wiring out there in the juice shack so that we can get power over here to the cabin. Now, some of the wiring that we're using out there is solid. Some of it is stranded. If it's very thin, you don't want to tighten those wires down behind like a set screw because what happens is since they're stranded and they're wound around each other, when you start tightening a set screw down to them, they start expanding and your set screw can actually go through the middle of them and it just pinches a few of them and the rest of them get pushed to the side. But with these right here, I don't know if you can see those, these are called ferrules. So the wire slides up inside of that little ferrule and then what we do is this tool that I was using to wire all the receptacles, especially the ground wires where I was trying to put them all together to where they wouldn't come loose with this tool right here. I think the camera will focus. You can see that this tool has different sizes of jaws. So different size ferrules will actually fit down in there and then you can crimp that down. What it does is it compresses all of those braids together and it kind of makes that one unit so that when you tighten that set screw down it actually pushes against the ferrule which is holding all of those together so this was really important that we didn't minimize our connections so that they would be nice and solid out there because we want to get all of the power we can and we also want like the batteries to transfer power back and forth if I'm using the generator into the solar charger or the charge verters what they call it just make sure all the connections are proper in the way that they should be so that the gauge stays the same and it doesn't change any so that everything works properly anyway so yeah those ferrules right there this is what I've been waiting on since I've got some different sizes out there I went ahead and ordered uh, a box of assorted sizes so some of these I may not use but these are very important on braided wire especially you know when you're trying to put it behind a set screw or something like that so that is what these are for and for those of you who are interested um, this series of videos is sponsored by Signature Solar who is our partner in this project that we've got here and I'll tell you, so far I have been really pleased with the quality of the items that we got from Signature Soap. Now, as far as the wiring that I was talking about out there, so for those of you who are interested in how we are going to set the solar panels up for the system that we've got, we are going to wire them in series. And the way that they're set up on the back is just from one to connect to the other, which is in series. Now, if I was going to wire them in parallel, our voltage stays the same, but the amps increase considerably. And we don't want to really do that because we don't want to override the circuitry that we've got for our system. So the way that it's designed with two rows of panels, eight in each, equipment that we've got can accept that on each side because we have two sides coming in, remember? So it can accept that. So we are wiring them in series and I'm gonna have to kind of pull some of the wiring back just a little bit inside the hut there because my red wires are still just a little bit long. I could leave them like that but I'd rather cut off any excess footage that I don't need 
because of voltage drop from one location to the next. So let me get my coat and hat on. We'll head out there and I'll talk to you and show you what I've got planned. All right, friends, I know it's a little bit difficult to see in here because I don't have any light in here yet, but this is the wire set that comes from the solar array. What I'm going to have to do is determine how much I want to leave in here before I make the connection, which I think what I'm going to do is turn this and come up because I have to mount this isolator switch right here. Probably I'm going to mount it over here like this and then continue around making a loop so I don't have any bends making a loop to tie in here. This is the wire that goes to the house so I have this breaker box right here that I'm going to mount here as well. I'm going to redirect this wire right here that actually goes to the light, bring it down inside of my breaker box. That way this wire can tie in there as well. And then those two will be connected in here on the output side, or the load side actually, that goes to the cabin. That way this side over here is reserved for the cables that actually come from the batteries over here and connect in as well as I'm going to ground the cabinet later on over here to the bus bar down there as well and any other wires that need to be coming in here so that I'll have them separated. I also have the charge verter that's going to go out there but I think that my cables they're only six feet long and I don't think that I'm going to have enough. I think I'm going to have to have some made up that are at least eight feet so that I can make all these turns and be able to fasten it against the wall. So by moving them like that or separating them, I've got to be sure and have a uh, long enough wire, like I said, to make my turns and so forth because I don't want any bends in it. I want to make gradual turns like this right here. Uh, maybe a little bit steeper, but you don't want to make a turn like this, okay? Um, but I need to probably get some longer cables there. But I could go ahead and start hooking up some of this stuff right here. Like I said, this and my little breaker box right there because we're also going to mount, I've got a flush mount plug right here that we're going to mount out here uh, somewhere. Probably over here now since we're going to be moving those wires. So, yeah, I've got quite a bit to um, get me started, and we've also got these fuses that have got to be wired in before everything hits our system right here. Now, I'm being honest with you folks, I, I do not have the slightest clue on this project, what I'm doing. I'm just trying to follow the book, but I was also watching a video on YouTube where he was talking about you've got a positive right here and you've got the negative, right? You've also got these terminals on each side. One side will be positive, the other side will be negative. Then you have your battery connections that loop into this and tie to it. He was talking about taking these large cables right here, fastening one down like say that we use the red cable down here to attach to this full bus bar, right? Because that's where we're getting the power from, these batteries. And this is going to feed it over to the unit. He was saying that to take the negative and attach it up top over there. Now, the theory behind that is, is when it's drawing power, it's not just kind of like circulating around one battery. It's pulling through kind of like diagonal, but not really, if that makes sense to you. It's pulling through all of the batteries by making the connections. Now, they all connect here, but like I said, in theory. So I thought, well, you know, this, the theory doesn't sound bad, so that's the way I'm going to connect these up. So that's the story behind those little ferrules that I have been waiting on so anxiously to get some of this wiring stripped back because this right here, this is 10 gauge, um, but it is actually stranded. So 
uh, it was important to have it for these and see all of these connections right here are the set screws as well as up here and over here these right here are actually connections that they have eyelets made on that you put um, a nut on but all of these connections right here really needed those little ferrules very important that I didn't separate uh, the braids and we make a really good connection but I don't know if you can hear that that they're down there this is the day after Christmas and they're back there working on Jennifer's cabin so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting all of this um, screwed to the wall so that I can start peeling these wires back and getting them all connected and hopefully we can get this thing up and running but friends thanks so much for stopping by we certainly do appreciate it be sure and stay tuned because this is the next video we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.